We're going to go over real quick on how I set up my material test grids. Um, today we're actually on the F1. So you can come over here to basic shape panel. You can select any of these shapes if you wanted to. You can make any vector into a test panel. That's how Xtool uses their X's. Um, I'm going to go up here and actually just select a rectangle. And when I'm drawing rectangles onto the canvas, I actually like to hold down the shift key while I click and drag. This keeps the square or the angles at a 90 degree. Um, keeps them nice and crisp. Um, that way we're all parallel. Um, otherwise, you let go of the shift key and we have this going on. Again, when you're going to release, release the mouse before you release the shift key. Otherwise, it's going to change. Now I'm going to just press the decimal point on the mouse pad or on the keypad and I'm going to put a uh, 5 for a half inch. Click enter. So it's going to it'll go ahead and change both values because we're locked in here. Alright. So now that we have that set, I have a reference here of basswood selected. So if you want to, you can go ahead and use these materials that are already in the library as a starting point. So when we click this up and drag this, so we have 90 to 50 power and 400 millimeters per second to 800. So there's a big gradient in here that you're not seeing, um, which could really affect your engravings if you're doing, say, a photo on wood. So the more precise and the more detailed you can really choose and hone down on your your settings the better so a lot of times what I'll do is I will kinda of pick an area say I like 60 to 80 on the power and I wanna go ahead and test from 400 to 600 on the um, the scale here so instead of going the whole thing I'm just gonna go ahead and go from 400 to 600 and I can select 5 rows, I can select 10 rows, I can select up to 20 rows to populate those settings and really make a nice gradient scale. Um, this really is going to help when you're doing canvases and you're doing painted projects that have multiple layers of paint. Um, I really suggest doing um, a test grid that's really more detailed and has the 20 um, settings here. So all right. Let's go over real quick on score here. When we go to on score cut, the only settings that we're going to need to change are going to be on the, um, the material test array itself. So when we come in here, as you can see on the left column, we have the minim minimum and maximum power. Here's the min, here's the max, and the column number. Um, how many columns we have here and then the rows how many rows we have so we can click this to 10 oh, rows are going down so and then the columns we're gonna go to 10 and sorry I'm dyslexic too so I switch those up sometimes alright so you can actually go up to 20 see if we push 25 it's gonna go to 20 same thing we can go 21 it's going to go back to 20. So you can go up to 20 by 20. And this is really going to take up a really large area. But um, as you can see, I'm going to go back to, let's say, 10 by 10. So we can actually see everything. And if you click anywhere in here, it will change. Until you click on something, it's going to kind of stay the same. So you get your live preview. All right, so say we wanted to do the 400 as our max and the 200 as our minimum you can see that these settings have changed in here on the other side over here we were doing what um, I want to say on score or all right so I think we we're at 400 and 200 and then we wanted to be between 60 on the power and 80 so we're going to do 60 as our minimum and then we click OK and then that that would be our uh, score test so 
ideally these these settings you don't want to you you want to keep them as close to the actual panel so that way you're going to get good results these settings were actually for the um, engrave but so I wanted to show you when you when you go to do the cut the same thing the only thing you can change is is going to be in here um, again try to do something close to the panel that's over here so that way you can see your material and what's going to work best for you like what works for me here I'm in Arizona I, I might be cutting my my machine um, see on my S1 I might cut at uh, 18 millimeters per second whereas you in your location with the humidity and everything in your material you might be cutting at say 15 or 14 um, it just really all depends and then also what's going to come into play is your air assist the better the air assist you have the better you're going to go so the only other when you're doing engrave you can come down here and you can actually select your lines per centimeter so this is going to really um, come into play so for engrave on the wood if we just select this and we come in here um, engraving on the wood you can see it's set to 100 everywhere um, if I go ahead and select this over here to say stainless steel we're going to see this jump up to 200 um, let me go to leather or laser bowl patch and we're going to see it drop down to 120 so the lines per centimeter is really going to determine on what material you're using but this is also a parameter when you're doing your testing um, if you see any lines inside of your engraving you're going to want to increase your lines per centimeter so that way you get rid of those lines um, essentially the lines per centimeter means that for every centimeter there's 120 vertical lines that equal up that area um, you can go as low as 10 I believe and all the way up to 300 um, so one more thing let me see here let me just grab a random image um, so I'm gonna grab these little pugs here all right wow those are big all right so now that we have these little pugs I'm gonna show you real quick um, we can actually use this to do a material test array so you can see the dot duration over here and the DPI so just like on the engrave for the vector the DPI is going to be our basically our lines per centimeter um, so that's going to be what's adjustable for us here we can go all the way down to 1 DPI or 1270 DPI and that's basically what that means is dots per square inch it's kinda like the pixels on your TV when you wanna watch uh, TV at your friend's house and they only have a they have an old HD TV and it looks all grainy and everything because you're used to watching your nice 4K with HDR. That's basically what what's happening here as we're increasing the the DPI, we're increasing the um, focus. So when we go to material test array, we can go ahead and set these parameters again here. As you can see, it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit longer because we have a, a more complex image, but it will populate. Um, but you can do the same thing here on your test um, and just kind of switch it for an image. Um, definitely also like when you're engraving onto a piece of wood, having your engraving set up like this is just fine. Um, say when you're going to go ahead and engrave onto metal or dark, or dark surface, let's go ahead and grab that. You're going to want to do your material test in an inverted position. So say you're doing a test for photos on a business card or something like that. I ideally would suggest you just use the business card settings. 
butt as a starter and then go in there and then you're going to want to adjust your image and what I usually do is increase the sharpness a little bit just dip the sat to grayscale down just a touch and it can take a second here sorry for the delay um, I've got a lot going on on my computer so see it went black and white and then we're going to want to invert that image basically this dog is going to become black and this one's going to become white um, alright so now that we have that image inverted we could actually come over here do a material test array We'll do the 5.5. Five. It's going to take a second to populate. Again, because they're complex files. I hope everybody's enjoying the video and actually learning a little bit. If there's anything that you need me to go over in more detail, please feel free to just ding me. Just be like, hey, I need you to do this do this a little bit better. Go into a little bit more detail. I'm trying to cover a little bit of everything with this video. Because the material test array is actually a pretty it's a pretty complex tool. If you really if you really get down to it, you can do a lot with it. Um, and it's a very useful tool. Um, once you get the hang of it, you're gonna be you're gonna be kind of wishing you probably didn't know how to use it, because you're gonna be testing every material you have, every, and every material you can get your hands on. All right. So as you can see, you can you can kind of get the gist of it. It's it's going around. It's just taking forever. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cancel this.